horology, the study and measurement of time, the art of making the machines that keep track of the very thing that governs our existence. From grand clock towers to the humble wristwatch, few objects today can claim to have such strong lineage to the history of humanity. We live in the 21st century, however, where checking the time is as easy as glancing at your phone. In the midst of our modern world, however, there are those who still appreciate, maintain and preserve the lost art of timekeeping. Watch in Time is a local watch repairing and servicing store based in Heathmont, Victoria. They are one of the few left which still maintain and practice the lost and underappreciated craft of watchmaking. My name is uh, Kevin Arenzi. I'm a first year, uh, oh, not first year, but a first generation watchmaker. Been in the uh, in the game now for 30 years. Day to day uh, in, in the workshop here, we, we do everything uh, to do with watches. So it's not just a battery fit and, and, and glass repairs, it's, it's uh, full restoration or work. It is taking apart movements, uh, finding out what the issues are that's, uh, that's stopping the watch, depending on what the problems are with watches. But uh, mostly we deal with probably about 90% mechanical watches. So, uh, you know, the, the days of the battery operated watches are, are, are past and we're going now into mechanical watches. I love the process of having something that's pretty um, worn out, uh, rusted, maybe uh, you know, a lot of people might think um, unrepairable, but I love to, uh, to bring these back to life. I like to, uh, I like to see them working again and nothing beats uh, well, the satisfaction of, of having, uh, once you put the, the final wheel in and the whole thing start to beat again. It's just, uh, it's fascinating for me and I just, uh, I just love the process. Time is the only constant in our world. Sure, us humans have gotten pretty good at keeping track of it. The history of the wristwatch really started during the First World War where soldiers found that a wrist-mounted watch was more useful than a pocket watch, and hence the era of mechanical wristwatches was born. The quartz crisis of the 1970s and 1980s turned the mechanical watch into an obsolete relic of the past. The most accurate mechanical watch loses or gains about two seconds a day compared to an electronic quartz watch's 15 seconds a month or even the atomic clocks, two seconds every few thousand years. It's one of the best jobs. You know what, every, I've been doing this now 30 years and every day um, it's different. You could have uh, 10 of the same watches on your bench, but they've all got 10 different reasons why they've stopped or 10 different reasons why they're here. Our predominant uh, watches that we repair now are Swiss and high-end. So dealing with some of these high-end brands, Omega, Rolex, uh, Patrick Philippe's. It's the whole process of repairing them that uh, that really gives me the buzz. My favourite is the one that I'm wearing, which is the uh, the Amiga Speedmaster, which is the Moon Watch. Um, when I was doing my apprenticeship, oh geez, some years ago, it's uh, it came across my bench, and that was probably the um, the one that really took my breath away. Yep, so I've got the Amiga Speedmaster, I've got the Rolex Submariner GMT, um, I've got the IWC Large Pilots. But these are the ones that uh, I won't let go. They're, uh, they're my favourites. So why are mechanical watches seeing a resurgence in popularity now, where telling the time is as easy as checking your phone? Just as grandfather clocks were a symbol of wealth and power, watches are a personal statement. Bold. Understated. The bottom line is, a timepiece is highly communicative of the owner a fashion statement, or a utilitarian tool, or perhaps both. Luxury mechanical watches still rely on skilled hands in their construction, which gives the product a human touch. 
The mechanical watch, a relic from an earlier age, is more relevant than ever today. Since the uh, 50s and 60s, watchmakers were on every street corner. They, were, um, they aligned themselves with optometrists, um, then they aligned themselves with jewellers, uh, and then in the 80s and 90s, they pretty much went home and worked from home in their garage. What we're finding now is the watchmakers now are becoming uh, what they call horologists, what they used to be called, but nobody knew what that was. It's, it's really tough because the, the lack of watchmakers coming through at the moment is, um, is, is quite significant. So we are finding ourselves now in Victoria, I think we've only got 40 watchmakers, but out of those, half of those are retired. So that leaves only 20, but that's the same in every state, and that's the same in every country in the world. I hope to see that the future would be strong, but unless we get numbers coming through, it ain't. So uh, I do get a bit worried because the, the numbers are, um, are falling. In our world dominated by fast fashion and planned obsolescence, mechanical movements can be repaired and preserved indefinitely and passed on from generation to generation. In other words, the mechanical wristwatch is one of the few objects to stand the test of time. It's up to us to educate people, um, and I, I think that's predominantly why I opened up the shop. So customers can come and see us direct, speak to the watchmakers who are actually doing the work on their watches. There's so much work that goes on behind the scenes that uh, people don't realise, um, and especially when parts are required, it, it's, it's a time process. I'm a... Um, in the, in the 40s, we're probably some of the youngest watchmakers around. There's a big, big call for watchmakers. You know, after, after we're gone or after we've taught our, um, the next generation, it's going to be up to them. Um, hopefully there's enough to, to go through, but there's, there's so many watches. And you look at uh, the population of where Australia is headed at the moment, and you're only dealing with 100 watchmakers in the country, dealing with millions of people. You know, hopefully uh, with what you're doing, uh, you can show people what, uh, what it involves. Timekeeping should be celebrated as an art, a celebration of human ingenuity and accomplishment, a piece of traditional horological history on your wrist or on your wall. Whatever the case, isn't it nice to sometimes sit back and just let time fly by?